On the road to recovery, Florida Congressman Greg Stubbe recovering after falling off a 25-foot ladder while cutting tree limbs on his Florida property. This happened late last month. His office says he suffered several serious injuries. The Florida Congressman joins us now, Greg Stubbe. Thank you so much for coming on National Report. Congressman, this yeah, is your yeah, this is your first interview on Newsmax since your, your, your injury. So for many viewers, maybe seeing you again for the first time, and, and, and it's great to see you, by the way, in great health. Hey, too. Can you walk us through what happened? And perhaps maybe, you know, you go through injuries sometimes in life, or hurdles, if you will, and you learn something from it, and you take something that could be applied to everyday life. What, what did you learn, and, and, and what happened, and where are you today? Yeah, the trauma surgeon said he added uh, extension ladders and chainsaws to my allergy list. Uh, so maybe that'll have some impact going forward. But I was trimming trees uh, on our property. We've got some property out in East Sarasota County. And um, we're still dealing with the effects of Hurricane Ian. A lot of us still trying to trim trees and that sort of thing. I was about 25 feet up. And the limb broke free as I was cutting through it with the chainsaw. It hit the um, extension ladder. It ejected me up into the air. And then I fell down, and as God provincially um, put in place, there was an Amazon driver that was there at the exact moment that I fell. He saw the whole thing happen. He was able to uh, come to my aid, call 911, arrange for the ambulance to come onto the property um, and get me to the hospital before anybody in my family even realized what was going on. I sustained a concussion, uh, tore ligaments in my neck. I have a contusion in my lungs, which is why I can't fly to D.C. until March I don't get cleared medically to do that. And then I have a crack in my pelvis right where the hip joint goes in. So I'm non-weight bearing for about six weeks. But we're on the mend. I get stronger and uh, healing every day. And uh, just got to give it that time for that bone to heal and my lung to heal up. And i um, looking forward to get back to Washington and do the things that uh, my constituents voted me to do. Absolutely. Well, look, we're glad to see you on the road to recovery. Happy to hear about the Amazon worker that was there at the right place at the right time. Amen. And also the dog that's with you that was keeping you company yeah. during your recovery as well. A man's best friend. Uh, but that's you true. are, as we see there, but you are... Um, you are able to watch maybe a lot more television, I'm assuming. Um, you're seeing what's happening, uh, obviously not being able to fly to, to Washington. You may have caught President Biden for the first time addressing the three un unidentified flying objects shot down last week, not including the one uh, reportedly from China. But many questions are still out there. I'm sure there are with you. Let me play this for you. This is the commander in chief on that. We don't yet know exactly what these three objects were. But nothing, nothing right now suggests they were related to China's spy balloon program. We seek competition, not conflict with China. We're not looking for a new Cold War. I will remain in communication with President Xi. So again, um, demanding of a lot of answers. There are a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. Is that the same for you, Congressman? Have you received any briefings on the, the three objects? Is the president's uh, message... Um, strong enough? Does it have enough substance? Well, it's definitely not strong enough. The Chinese Communist Party is the number one national security threat to our nation. And he stood by for eight days and let a air balloon with surveillance capabilities from the Chinese Communist Party traverse our entire country. And on the three latest ones that they shot down uh, and used fighter jets to shoot down, um, we had a briefing this week and they told us they didn't know exactly what it was. Well, if they didn't know what it was and it wasn't the Chinese Communist Party surveilling or another uh, rogue nation surveilling on us, then why did you uh, shoot them down? So uh, there's still a lot of questions and not a lot of answers. And we had a briefing this week for all members of Congress and a lot of members of Congress, some of which are former um, pilots who fought in fighter jets, asked very specific questions and didn't get any answers. And then when we asked very specific questions about what the White House was doing, when the president was advised, why for eight days the president refused to shoot down a balloon that they knew was the Chinese Communist Party surveillance balloon. Uh, why did they th th let that traverse our entire country, go over nuclear bases, go over B-2 bomber bases? We didn't get any answers from that. Yeah, that's the big questions that many have. Why was this one allowed to travel eight days and the others, uh, they were shot down almost instantly. Uh, and by the way, those missiles that they use, I believe, are $400,000. Those rockets or missiles that yeah. they use are 400000 bucks. And if it's a hobby balloon that was $18 in the air, 
What exactly is going on? Uh, we'll continue to ask that question. But look, if we're having this conversation right now and one of the customers has a direct TV, they're not able to see you right now or to hear about your story. I know you signed a letter to AT&T and direct TV executives based on canceling this network, Newsmax, um, questioning why they did that. How is it affecting the, the folks in your state of Florida? We've received uh, so many phone calls, so many emails about this, people switching service. What have you heard? about this and the letter that you've sent. Yeah, we've had a lot of constituents and people in my district reach out to our office outraged. Um, obviously, there's also a movement amongst conservatives to say, all right, well, we're going to ban DirecTV and move to some other platform. But this is what these leftist uh, media programs do is they don't want the voices of people like President Trump and conservative voices to be heard. So they just take them off their platform and make it more difficult uh, for you the citizens of this country to hear from conservative voices. And it's exactly what mainstream media has been doing for years. And now you're seeing it uh, come out in clear as day. Now, I hope that uh, Energy and Commerce, it's a committee I do not sit on, but I hope they start bringing these individuals, uh, the AT&T CEO, the CEO of some of these different entities before these committees and ask them very tough questions under oath as to why they're paying liberal organizations and liberal news medias who don't, doesn't have anywhere near the viewership that Newsmax does and refusing to pay Newsmax and dropping them. So there's a lot of questions that I would have if I was on that committee. And I sure hope that the chairman of that committee is going to bring the CEO of DirecTV before the committee so the American people can hear exactly what his reasoning is for doing what he's doing. But we know, we know his reasoning, but let's put him under oath and ask him those questions. We appreciate uh, the kind words about the network. Lastly, before I let you go, I know that you put this out on social media. The beard or no beard, have you gotten a yeah. response? What, what's the response been? What's the verdict? The people have spoken, 68% say bring the beard back, which was actually <laughs> kind of surprising. I had to shave it because the neck collar yeah. was rubbing me, yeah. um, but I got the neck collar off, so I guess I'm going to have to bring, that, bring back the beard. All right, and that's coming back, and you're going back to Congress as soon as you get better. I believe you said in March, or going back to D.C. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's good to see you recovering, Thank Congressman. You. Thank you. That's Greg Stupe. Thank you.